Hello, this is Ron Clark bringing you Lesson 7 in the Self-Healing Archaeus. This lesson is suitable only for those who have mastered Step 4 of Initiation into Hermetics and are making good headway with the Step 5 work. Our subject in this lesson is Astromental Wandering. Mastery of Archaeus Lesson 6 is an absolute prerequisite for the pursuit of this lesson since the elemental balance is what releases the astromental body from its bonds and enables true wandering. One of my motivations for creating this series of audio lessons in the first place was the many requests that I have received from students of initiation into hermetics for a safe and sane method of astral projection that could be employed prior to reaching step 9. The desirability of astral projection has become a very strong part of the current magical culture, and many are willing to take great risks to achieve it. In fact, during my years serving as a companion to countless students of initiation into hermetics, I have been faced with many instances where the student has done considerable damage to their astral and mental bodies through their attempts to master astral projection, employing today's popular techniques. So I see that meeting this need in a safer manner than is presently available, and in a quicker manner than Bardon suggested, has become important to the welfare of many students of initiation into hermetics. At first, I felt a great amount of resistance to illuminating the following technique, since I firmly believe that Bardon's system is the best, most beneficial way to proceed. I had planned to merely introduce those aspects of the Archaeus which are most healing for the three bodies, in hope that this would ameliorate the damage being done through the pursuit of today's latest fad. In fact, Lesson 7 was to originally have been about the benefits of integrated self-expression through the consciously unified and elementally balanced physical astromental body, instead of being about astromental wandering. What deterred me from this plan was the receipt of several notes indicating that folks had realized the possibilities of projection inherent to Lessons 4 and 5, which deal with the passive separation of the three bodies. Therefore, it became imperative that I explain the proper way of using the Archaeus to achieve astromental wandering. In order to safely astromental wander, there must be a state of elemental balance within the three bodies. For example, spontaneous or unintentional astromental body separation occurs at times when there is a natural elemental balance among all three bodies. When everything is just so and all the right factors come into temporal accord, the astromental body spontaneously exits the physical body. Primary among those conditions is a state wherein the three bodies achieve a temporary state of elemental balance. There are also additional conditions that must be met at the same time, such as a behest from higher levels of self, karmic need, and so on. The bond which binds the astromental body to the physical body is not loosened naturally unless these conditions are met. Nonetheless, many popular techniques seek to override these natural conditions through an intensive accumulation and projection of raw energy and therein lies the greatest danger of these techniques since they abuse and ignore the safeguards that nature has deemed necessary. As Bardon illustrated in Initiation into Hermetics, however, when an elemental equilibrium of all three bodies is achieved, separation of the astromental body becomes a matter of conscious intention instead of meeting certain conditions. This is one reason why Bardon placed mental wandering at step 8 and astral wandering at step 9. By step 8, all three bodies have been brought into a state of elemental equilibrium. From the very beginning, the Archaea seeks to incubate this equilibrium, first with the physical body in a process that leads towards an understanding of how the universal qualities of the elements manifest within the physical body, then with the astral body through a similar process with the same end and finally with the mental body in the same manner. Once these qualities are recognized, and to a certain degree this realization has been integrated into the three bodies, separation, not wandering or travel, becomes possible. This coincides with the work of step three, at which point one has achieved what I call the rudimentary astral elemental balance, wherein the most outstanding negative personal traits have been transformed. 
Then, once one has made good progress with step four, there is lesson six of the Archaeus, in which I turn to balancing the elements through accumulation within each of the three bodies, followed by a thorough reintegration. At this point in the initiation into Hermetics training, the astral elemental equilibrium is close at hand, if not already in place. So lesson six reinforces the nascent astral equilibrium and speeds a practitioner towards its maturity. Compared to Bardon's pacing, the only ingredient actually lacking in order for there to ensue safe astromental wandering is the matter of the mental elemental equilibrium. In initiation into Hermetics, Bardon doesn't begin directly addressing the mental equilibrium until step 7, which is another reason why mental wandering doesn't come until step 8. But here in lesson 6 of the Archaeus, is an exercise which directly addresses the mental equilibrium by the end of step four. By the end of step four, beginning of step five, there is already a mental balance in place. So the lesson six exercise will strengthen this balance and speed its evolution toward a true equilibrium. What makes this speeding up safe is the careful integration of the elemental harmony into each of the three bodies in succession. This grounds the harmony, which is what transforms transitory harmony into less transient balance and ultimately into equilibrium. As I said, in order to safely astromental wander, there has to be a state of elemental balance within the three bodies. This degree of balance can be induced by the Archaeus process, and in this present lesson seven, I will be elucidating a method by which this is achieved. As with the previous lesson six, this lesson requires such a deep level of concentration and separation of the three bodies that it would be impractical for me to lead you through the practice as I did in the early lessons. Instead, I will once again be simply describing the process, and it will be up to you to then put it into practice. So let's move on to a description of the practice. Lesson seven begins with a complete replication of lesson six. This is the foundation which establishes the elemental balance of all three bodies. So first you will separate your three bodies and then create an elemental harmony within your solitary mental body. You then integrate this mental harmony into your astral body and create an elemental harmony within your astromental body. Next you integrate this astromental harmony into your physical body and create an elemental harmony within your physical astromental body. This whole procedure must be enacted very carefully and thoroughly, with special attention being given to the successive integrations. At this point, you must spend a few minutes deeply focused upon the unity of your three bodies and upon their mutual elemental balance. When this meditation feels complete, focus upon your intention to astromental wander. You must build a very strong force of will into this intention. Now constrict your awareness to your astromental body in the usual manner and separate your elementally balanced astromental body from your elementally balanced physical body. At first you must stand very still right next to your empty physical shell. Focus again upon the balanced state of your bodies and upon the usual sensations of your astromental body. Focus your attention exclusively within your astromental body. Now observe the silver cord that connects your astromental body to your physical shell. See how thin and elastic it is. Note how much more elastic it is than when you separated your astromental body previously, prior to achieving the elemental balancing of all three bodies. Now turn your attention away from your physical body and from the silver cord. Focus exclusively within your astromental body and reaffirm its elemental balance by gently accumulating the four elements into their respective regions and then releasing them. Now turn your attention outward to your physical surroundings. It's likely that you will feel a great sense of freedom, compounded by an eagerness to immediately fly off, but this must be kept in check. You must be in control of it instead of it controlling you. Stand perfectly still until you feel that you are in command and able to resist any urges to fly off. Your ability to be self-directing in the face of this strong urge 
is dependent upon the maturity of your mental discipline and your elemental equilibrium. Once you are certain that you have command of yourself, take a few steps around the room in which your physical body rests. Examine the details of your physical surroundings with the faculties inherent to your astromental body. After a few minutes of this, stop and stand very still once again. Focus inwardly and once again reaffirm the elemental balance of your astromental body. If necessary, briefly accumulate and release the elements. When this feels complete, turn your attention to the silver cord and to your resting physical body. Observe the changes in the silver cord regarding its thinness and elasticity. Again, turn your attention back to your physical surroundings and explore them once again. This time, look for a few small details of the room and commit them to memory. Later, you will compare these memories with a physical viewing of the same details. After a few minutes of this, turn your attention back to your physical body, reaffirm the elemental balance of your astromental body, and then re-enter your physical body. Thoroughly integrate your astromental body with your physical body in the manner of Lesson 6, including the accumulation of the four elements into their respective regions. Release the elements and then return to normal waking consciousness in the usual manner. Immediately after you have regained your normal physical awareness and senses, you must examine your physical surroundings and discern how closely your astromental perceptions correspond with your physical perceptions. Look for the specific details that you memorized during your astromental journey and compare those memories to what you see now. Repeat this practice of examining your immediate surroundings while inhabiting your astromental body and then comparing them to your physical perceptions over and over until such time as your astromental perceptions align with the physical reality. From this practice you will learn how to discern between subconscious projections and factual reality. When you have reached the point where your astromental perceptions of your immediate surroundings are reliably accurate, you may then begin to venture further afield. When possible, view the places you travel astromentally with your physical body later on, in order to be certain that at a distance your astromental perceptions are also accurate. Venture further and further away from your physical body as time goes by, but stay within the temporal present moment. Proceed in this way until you have become adept at visiting any place within the present moment of time-space that you choose. The method by which you get from the location of your physical body to any other point in space is fairly simple. It's merely a matter of forming a strong intention to visit such and such a place. This creates a mental resonance which, because of the mental plane law of like attracts like, immediately draws you to your location of choice. For example, if you wish to astromentally wander to a relative's home, you would need to create the strong mental intention to do so, and this would carry your astromental body to their physical presence. The practice of mastering astromental wandering within the physical present moment prepares the astromental body for entry into the more ephemeral layers of the astral realm. Navigation within these layers of the astral is somewhat different and involves, in addition to strongly formulated intention, the accumulation of the single elements for exploring the elemental realms and the accumulation of specific frequencies of colored light for exploring the zone girdling the earth. In other words, these explorations require an alteration of your astromental body from its natural state. This concludes Lesson 7 in the Self-Healing Archaeus concerning astromental wandering. I hope for your sake that you choose to use this knowledge wisely and apply it to the forwarding of your magical evolution. My best to you.